As we've mentioned before, the Plaza Arts uh, Studio Tour is coming up in November. Gia McNutt is one of the ladies who is involved in putting this all together. A gargantuan task, but you are up to it, I presume. I am. Thank you, Jerry, so much to have me on the, on the show. Thank you. You saved my life. You helped me get collections of all these uh, artworks, <laughs> be able to show people so they'll be tantalized and want to take the tour themselves. That's what we hope. Now, your work is on this tour this year. That is correct. What made you decide to get into art? Wow. That's a, a, a fun question. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling you earlier, I ran an IT business for 21 years. Mm -hmm. And then I guess I was at this midlife awakening point and decided, uh, after watching my kid take an art class, that I ought to take it. Okay. I took it and here we are, mm -hmm. four years later. My mother was also an artist though. Um, but maybe because she was an artist, I didn't think that was my future because it was my mom's, you know. Sure. Yeah. Um, what kind of thing do you like to portray and what uh, kind of uh, medium do you prefer? I typically work in acrylic okay. and sometimes mixed media, which just means you can add a lot of different things to it. Uh, the subject matter I like to paint is pretty varied, uh, but what's critical is that it has a lot of bright, vivid color, um, that it maybe captures some sort of emotion. Uh, and uh, it could be a landscape, it could be a landscape with a person in it, it could be, uh, I'm also going to dabble in some abstract stuff for the tour coming up. Oh good. Yeah. Have you studied any abstract painters to try to get an idea where you'd like to go with it? I definitely. In fact, studying today is so easy mm -hmm. because of the internet. I mean, back in the old days, people couldn't do that. Now I can just Google anything yeah. and uh, even see how to do it on YouTube. Sure. But uh, that said, nothing takes the place of a great art teacher. And uh, I've been in some great classes as well, and it's really helpful. Now, you are familiar with and, and friends with some of these folks who appear. Yes. And we're going to be talking a little bit about some of the folks who first appeared on the show last week, yeah. which was when we went, uh, we, we snuck in, like thieves in the night, we snuck in <laughs> to Gallery IQ. They were expecting us. <laughs> and and uh, they were kind enough, uh, Ms. Swerdlow and uh, Ms. Kreps were good enough to... Uh, sit down and talk to us about the uh, reception that happened uh, last weekend, mm -hmm. the upcoming tour, mm -hmm. and the 18 artists will be featured. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're going to begin. We're going to be talking about some of the artwork that you can see at Gallery IQ, then moving on to some of the work of the, what would it be, 61 other artists? There were 77 altogether. 77 altogether. Okay. In 40 locations. Now, are you going to have your studio open? Yes, uh, I'll be located at the Newcastle Packing Shed Art Studios and Gallery, which is in downtown Newcastle. I've seen it. Yeah, there'll be a, a few other artists there as well. You're right near Dirty Dingus McGee? No, we're right next to La Fornaretta Restaurant. Oh, yes, yes, okay. And uh, right. Newcastle Produce. Okay. Those are two key landmarks for people finding us. Okay, very good. So let's talk about some of the things that uh, we did see there, beginning with your own. Okay. You have a, um, a piece of work called Open Heart. Yes. And tell us about it. Well, there is actually a good story to this. I had been through a dark period, and it was, not, uh, it was in that period of midlife awakening that I told you about. Um, yeah. There were some pretty dark times, and I had gone with uh, some friends, some girlfriends, to Treasure Island. And someone, for some reason, that day and that experience with those girls, I just felt joy for the first time in I don't know how long. And a friend snapped a photo of me, and it just captured this emotion of joy so much that I wanted to paint using the photo as a reference. And I, I think yeah. I really captured that joy. And, and people really remark on that when they see that piece. So open heart is kind of a remembrance of you're looking at a picture of yourself. Mm -hmm. in which you probably didn't recognize yourself at first. Yeah, it was, it was just this crazy, triumphant joy, which I hadn't felt in a long time. Yeah. And you decided that that's what you wanted to express. Yes. Very nice photograph, but like I told, excuse me, painting. But like I told you, I couldn't, I, I, I thought it was a, a sunrise, but it's right. a sunset, really. It, it, well, it's actually, Yes, it is a sunset. I don't know that the sun was really, you know, where you saw the ball of sun setting. It was like a, a shimmering brightness over the water. Yeah. Yeah. Probably the most personal painting I've painted to date. And interestingly, I have sold many uh, prints of that painting. Are you going to put it on, on for sale? 
Uh, the original is for sale. I kind of, okay. in a way, don't hope it doesn't sell, but sure. <laughs> but it is personal. for sale. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to Moonlit. Yes. Tell us about Moonlit and Bobby. Bobby Pilliard. Uh, she's an amazing artist. She does oil, acrylic, and pastel. And in this painting, Moonlit, uh, it's just got some lovely hues, uh, different colors and textures, and. Uh, her work is really extraordinary. She also has uh, a nickname. It's her art nickname, and I learned it when uh, we're on Facebook together. She's referred to as Zaga. <laughs> That's her art name, and I just love that. And she's just a, a live wire, and her art is beautiful. Now, I thought I saw a, a few pieces of her work. She sticks to that theme of a moon that's shrouded in clouds and... Greatness, no? Not, she doesn't stick to it, but in that email you were sent, there were two versions of that painting. Oh, I so see. So that's, that's probably why you thought that. Artists make two versions of a painting? No, but, I, well, sometimes they do. Actually, artists often make a series. Okay. So uh, someone may have the Moonlight series, for example, sure. and then they might have several paintings in that series, or the Lady series, and there are several different types of, you know, different ladies depicted. Does an artist usually realize they've got talent? Are they the first one? Or does it usually come as a kind of epiphany or a revelation when someone else comes up and says, you know, your work is really good? Well, that's really an interesting question. And I can't really speak to anyone's experience but my own. And uh, I guess for me, uh, the external validation really is a big part of it because I mean, a lot of us do art because we just enjoy the heck out of creating. Sure. And regardless of external validation, that's what we'll do. Uh, it's extremely uh, wonderful to get that kind of external validation. And you go, wow, maybe I, maybe I do have something here. Right. I think everybody who does any kind of creation likes that. Yeah. I remember in a film called Hitchcock. It was about Alfred Hitchcock making the film of Psycho. It was based on a book of somebody who did a book about the making of that movie, right. which was a landmark at its time. Right. Alfred Hitchcock at that time was looking for a big success because he was kind of heartbroken. He would tell people, you know, I've made them millions of dollars in Hollywood, and not once did they invite me to those horrid award shows mm -hmm. and tell me I'm really good. And you got to think about a guy who's considered now a genius in film, just wanting for somebody to go and say, you're really good. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's heartbreaking. I mean, and, and, and so many artists become uh, famous or are really recognized or lauded after they die. Bingo. So, I mean, yeah. in, in millions, hundreds of people. But, yeah, it is very nice to be acknowledged. Yeah, so Teresa is a fused glass artist, and she does a lot of different kinds of things. Uh, she does some functional art, you know, plates and bowls and such, and pears is one of those pieces uh, where it is a functional piece of art, and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful depiction of uh, still life, but made with fused glass. She also makes jewelry and, uh, and, and a few other types of things like that. I'd hate to use that as a coaster. Well, I know. So many wonderful pieces of art that are functional art. I can't imagine. Okay, so some wood artists make these lovely cutting boards. The last thing, <laughs> last thing in the world I want to do is cut on this fabulous piece of wood yeah, art. Exactly. <laughs> so, but yeah, it is functional art, and people do use them. Okay. I don't think you want them in the dishwasher. No, I would <laughs> put a couple of pears on there. Right. And, have a munch when you want. Exactly. Uh, Sargent and his creation, wood? Yeah, so Sargent, Phil Sargent is a wood turner, and uh, he makes all manner of interesting things. Uh, this particular piece that we're looking at um, is a bowl, but it's got some really interesting leaves, I guess, coming out of it. Um, wood turning artist is fascinating. Just to watch someone do it is really interesting. I'm not a wood turner. I can't describe how they do it, but what they come out with at the end is just beautiful. This is like you used a piece of driftwood or something. Is that possible? It is very possible. And a lot of people, a lot of artists, really like to use found objects in their art. And oh, yeah. it's kind of neat to use something that was already something else. Mm -hmm. Okay, now one of my favorite artists who I always interview when he was at Finn Tour, uh, excuse me, on tour at Finn Hall. And unfortunately, Finn Hall is not being used this year. I was wondering. Um, Craig Johnson yep. has one called Red Umbrella. Yes. Um, that is, this is a lovely 
uh, piece of photography. Craig is a very talented photographer. Um, I, I just, I want to follow that person with the red umbrella and find out who they are and, and what is the scenario here. His, his photographs are all very intriguing. They make you want to enter the photograph and understand what's happening. I think it looks like some kind of street in a European setting. Sure does. Sure, um, archway, small yep. street. And uh, there's one person walking down who catches your eye yep. with the umbrella. The red umbrella. There was another one that I saw that I thought was very in, uh, intriguing, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom's fused glass bowl. Yes, another fused glass artist, again, with a functional piece of work. Um, but just beautiful. I just, fused glass is so seductive. I mean, it's just, it's just beautiful. I look at these things and it makes me want to be a fused glass artist. Okay. But it's beautiful cobalt blue and, and these, the fabulous lines in this piece. Uh, again, I, I, like you, would wonder about should I really use it, but, <laughs> or maybe just have it displayed. Yeah. Uh, it's beautiful, beautiful work. Either that or just, you know, get rid of the choice whatsoever and just give it as a gift and there you go. do what you want. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, Bird of Paradise. Yes. Tell us about it. So Emily Rigetti is a, uh, she, she does amazingly intricate work in mediums that are typically thought of as, and they are, hard and, and you know, ceramic is not typically something that you see a lot of intricacy in the work. Um, but she manages to make very delicate and intricate creations uh, using ceramics and kiln formed glass. So really interesting artist and very detailed and beautiful work. Now this name is familiar because it's the name of one of my favorite of all time Al Pacino films, Scent of a Woman. And that character that he played there, the blind colonel, mm -hmm. was based on a character that appeared in an old Italian film that I saw many, many years ago in Greenwich Village called Seven Beauties. And uh, I'm wondering if there's any tie-in to the sculpture. Do you know? That is a great story? question. I do not know the answer. Okay. I, I'm going to have to ask him. And Jim Lee is the artist here. It's fabulous sculptor and instructor. It is beautiful. And I have actually taken um, a, a clay head sculpture course from him. Everyone comes out of that class with an amazing piece. He is truly an amazing sculptor and teacher, but um, I love the expressions he gets in the faces. Everything is, is full of expression and just really unique. I, his, all of his sculptures are really neat. You have to be more of a technician and a tactile person in order to create something like that? It's very tactile, yeah. but I don't know about technician, but I will say that you've got the anatomy book out while you're doing this, sure. and he's telling us about the mandible and how the ear joins here, and you start realizing that you never really looked at how an mm -hmm. ear joins the face before. Sure. And uh, he said from now on you'll start staring at people's ears and they're going to think you're weird. Those are just some of the artists uh, we're reminding you that you can see down at Gallery IQ from now until the Placer Arts Studio Tour, which is? November 11th, 12th, and 13th, uh, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., 77 artists in 40 locations. Including you. Including me. Now, are you going to be meeting the people who come to see your art? Oh, heck yeah. And you're going to be engaging them in conversation as to some of your technique? Oh, yeah, possibly. They're not always interested in technique, so I try to let them lead the conversation to their interest. I've heard a variety of answers to this question, which everybody who does anything creative gets, including me. And that is, where do you get your ideas? A variety of different things. Uh, certainly things that are just visually moving, you know, like, wow. And I, and I love, my favorite types of things include water with sunlight reflecting, uh, sunsets, for example. And so when we went to Venice, for example, this summer, that was just a cornucopia of visual splendor for me, as was the south of France with the rustic buildings. And yeah. the, so, so it just depends. If it's, if it's something that just makes me go, wow, then that's something that I want to paint. Terrific. Now, your gallery, you also have a gallery. Yes, I'm at a studio gallery in Newcastle. Okay. Newcastle Packing Shed Art Studios and Gallery. There are 11 other artists there with me. 
And my studio partner, Rick Watson, is also on the tour, and he's an excellent oil artist. Well, much luck on the tour. I hope you make a lot of sales. Thank you. Get some nice notoriety. I want to thank you for helping me in putting this show together so we can tell everybody about the great experience that people can have on this tour. I have attended it many times, covered it many times. I think it's terrific. I think it's one of the best things we have here. I want to thank you for making it come alive for so many people. Thank you, Jerry. Okay, ma'am. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you.